Hello, welcome to 3D Drawing View Model Railway. In today's lesson, we're going to continue working on our cable laying wagon. We're going to start to look at some of the brake rigging underneath. Um, this is going to be quite a complex job because um, it's not symmetrical both sides. Um, the V hangers here in different places. All you've got to be careful of is there is a rod that runs between the two. So you obviously need to have them both of being um, exactly opposite each other so that they can um, intersect each other. Okay, so the, 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 the best thing to do to be able to make sure they're in the correct place is to draw this rod first. Now, if we look at its current position, vertically it looks like it comes down roughly where this fourth, fourth post from the end is, and then the height wise, it looks like it's roughly where the axle box is. So if we come into fusing, we just start sketching on the side. We're going to create an offset plane from the recess of the sole bar. And we're going to click on OK on that. Then we're going to draw a sketch on that plane. Then we're going to use a circle to create that rod. One, two, three, four, vertical down, roughly in line. In fact, if we project that circle, we can then make sure we can get it in line with that. Okay, so there's your fourth post down. And draw a circle 0.5. And then if we extrude this all the way through to the other side, to the recessed part of the sole bar as well. Okay. Now we know that we're going to have the hangers in exactly the same position both sides. Okay, so if we look at the shape of the hanger on this side, we've got like a diagonal piece that comes down and then up and then a vertical piece that goes up there. Okay. So it's not symmetrical. So if we create a sketch on plane 11 which is the one we just created to draw the original circle here okay and we're going to draw using the line tool so this first part is just to the left of the fourth fourth post along so if we create a sketch starting like this i'm going to go around the bottom of the what we've just drawn it comes up at a sharp angle and then vertically in. I want to fix the height of this so it doesn't move here and I'm going to constrain those two lines like that. Okay, I'm now going to offset the whole thing inwards. Uh, I think we're going to minus 1.5. Okay, you can see how I'm going to have to manipulate this slightly to get that rod to sit correctly. So I'm going to unfix this bottom base here and I'm going to move that upwards, shorten it's going to be a little bit of trial and error here to try and get the sizes and dimensions correct. So that's the whole of that circle within that bottom base. We've got that weird asymmetrical shape that we've got here. And it's intersecting. I might change the angle of this actually, yeah. So if we extrude this, let's extrude it into the wagon. 0.5, we tell it to join. It's going to change the angle of this slightly. Uh, that would be this sketch here. Okay, what we got in the angle then? So we've got 175. I'm going to try maybe 177. I'm just going to move that in slightly. Okay, yeah, you can see it's still intersecting here, but not quite so much. So it looks like it's actually on the outside of it. Okay, um, let's have a look in this side profile. Okay, I might make the whole handbrake come down at a slightly sharper angle. So if we go back to the, we're doing the plane that we did at the angle here on this end, we'll change that to maybe 8 degrees angle. Yeah, 
I think I'm happy with that. Yeah. Okay, so let's have a look for a picture with the hang on the other side. So here we are. So we're going to spin fusion around and have a look from the other side here. Okay, so having spun this round to the other side and comparing the positions here, the, the handbrake actually looks like it does go at a higher angle on this side. So it's probably going to be the same on the other. So I'm just going to make a, a slight tweak to that angle. I'm going to just bring it back another degree and see how that looks. Because obviously we need to have this hanger in the same position with the rod that comes through underneath. You know what, I think we might better having that in the original position. Bring that back to six. Yeah. Okay, so now we've got to have this V hanging on this side. So you can see, looking at here, you've got the down vertical of this railing. Looks like it's roughly in a similar position. So we're going to create, uh, actually we need to create an offset plane from that inner surface. And then create a sketch on that offset plane. So let's have a look. I'm going to come, this one looks a lot more symmetrical in shape, although it's again it's offset slightly to this side. So probably not far off the original shape. We project actually that cross. Again, draw the line it comes down like that and across. But it looks like it does go up a lot more vertical on this side. So probably something like that. And then we can offset. Line not draw. Just check that. There. I things again. Not selected. So, oh, okay. That's interesting. So, from there. That's that's definitely weird. Let's undo those lines. Let's try drawing those in again. So down there. Now we've got it sort of offset, but still not quite in that offset. Okay. And then we can go to the swing again. That's one way to try to do it. Select these profiles. And then we can extrude them. Okay, so I think I'm happy-ish with the shape of that. Okay, so we now got these linkages to draw. So the down one, I think, is just going to be vertical coming off the side here. Uh, so if we draw on the inside of the, I'm drawing on the far side one here. So I'm drawing on this inside face here. I'm going to draw a rectangle that's going to be 0.5. How far down is it? actually goes below the, the level of the rod. So yeah, maybe 2.2. No, no. 4.5 by 2.2. Probably too far actually. 2.1 maybe. 2. 2. Let's go with 2. Yeah. Okay, and if we extrude these two 
inwards. No, I'm not fine. Draw the same on the other side here. I'm just trying to draw these parts symmetrically because they are identical both sides. Okay, the next part that could be interesting because the part is going to be the same so these two need to be intersecting each other so we're going to have to change the length of these last bits I think let's try 2.5 on that a little bit more Two. Just playing around with this to try and get these two verticals to look pretty much the same. 2.62 is probably just a tiny bit too much. 2.61, and that's probably going to be too little. We have to be somewhere in between. No, that's fun. Okay, as I say, the reason for that is this part here looks like it's identical both sides. Okay, so let's go back into Fusion and we're going to draw, I think, let's have a look underneath. It's going to be in the inside surface of this. Okay, so let's draw these two that touch the front of them. Let's edit that and tell it to join. Okay, so now I'm going to be drawing on again the inside surface of the far hanger there. I'm drawing a line. I'm going to start that position, and I'm going to mirror this across. I'm going to create a body, a separate body, and then mirror it across. So it's going to come to that there. That. Draw a line upwards, 0.5, uh, could have been vertical, so that's going to have a rectangle on there, 0.5, this line needs to be different angle up and above like that and then we're going to create a three point arc from there to there outwards. I'm going to move the length of these in slightly. Okay. And then if we select those profiles, extrude towards us, 0.5, and this one is going to be new body. Click on OK. And the reason for that is we're going to copy that across. So let's just check we've got the mid plane across the wagon we have. So if we mirror that profile, so it's on bases, which is body, so it's going to be that body across, let's find that mid plane, which I think is that one. That 
joining both sides. Correct, that's looking like it's working there. What I'm going to do is just extrude this slightly to meet up on that side. So if we edit that feature, it's going to be now need to be a two sided. And we're going to join like that. Just so this is intersecting through this part here. Click on OK. That should be touching both sides now. Yes, good. Let's have a look one on. So this, this one you can see comes down, links back in that way. That one comes down and links the other up direction. Good. And we're going to combine body one with. Oh, I don't want dummy wheels in there. Body one is going to combine body twenty and twenty. Okay, so now we've got that break linkage underneath. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is just go around and draw on all of the um, circles where the bearings would be and the link points would be. So if we just jump into Fusion again, this isn't going to be too difficult. It's going to create on this one surface here, a small circle. If I need to snap that straight, I might be able to move it. 0.4. Yeah, looks okay. And I'm going to extrude that. I'm going to do two sided extrusion on this uh, just to save me really having to draw it or use any other tools. So I'm just going to come out 0.4 two on that side. I'm just going to drag the other side all the way through. About there. Allow that to join. And we've got that one's both sides. An easy little cheat there. Because it's going through the centre of that, that rod. It's not going to make any difference. Um, okay, so there's one on each of these, create a sketch on that surface. I'm going to go halfway point on there. Got 0.3 diameter, 0.35, so it's a little bit bigger. And then extrude that 0.2, make sure it's a join. And I'm going to mirror that. Nope, didn't want to roll it. Okay, mirror of feature. Select that feature and then mirror across the center plane there, which is plane three. And I'll put it onto the other side. Okay, and then we're going to have one on there. Go again. I'm going to try and project that circle so that now it's going to be vertically in line with it. This one's going to be a little bit bigger. That hasn't locked vertically with that. So that and that should be vertically constrained. Okay, that looks okay. Extrude that 0.2. Again, make sure it joins. Again, this is going to be on the other side as well, so we can mirror that as well. Select the feature, mirror plane being plane 3, and click on OK. Um, and then there's one here. Okay, and uh, let's have a quick look here. That's 0.5, so I've got a dimension from there to the top line. There's 0.25, that should put that in the middle. I'm going to move it back slightly so it looks like it's in the middle of this that comes up here. And then select and extrude that. Then make sure that joins. Okay, so the other one, other side, sorry, if we spin this round, 
this is going to have to have a bracket on this this side. If we find that there. So we've got a bracket here. It come, looks like it comes down vertically and then goes up at an angle on the other side. So that's going to be about this position. So let's find that plane. That one. And that one. We're going to create a sketch on plane 12, which is the same side as this needs to be on. We're going to have a line that comes down vertically like that, across slightly. Strain these to there, that to there. I'm just going to drag that line up tight so it's behind the handbrake and then extrude that. Not point five, make sure it joins. Okay. Bring it back round. surface. There's a circle on it. Now we can dimension for the top surface so we know it's in the middle at 0.5 and then extrude that at 0.2. Pretty happy we've got everything on the brake rigging drawn there. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to draw really on this episode is I'm going to draw what I think this is a vacuum cylinder here. I haven't got a proper full sketch, but it just looks like a circle really. Uh, there's obviously some bits that come underneath it. Um, I'm just going to draw it sort of to create a silhouette so that it looks like it's there, um, but it's not going to be in too much detail. Now, if we look at which side it's on, it's on the side where the B hanger is behind the handbrake. So we've got to make sure we're looking at the, the correct side, which is this one. And then that vacuum looks like it's sort of behind that upright here. So we're just going to spin to the bottom surface, create a sketch on that floor, and then Five in diameter, probably about right. We're going to move that around. I think it looks like it's in the right place. So what I'm looking at is that it looks like it's slightly behind. It's really difficult to see actually. I think it's probably somewhere in that. I'm just going to extrude downwards. That's probably 1.5 is enough. To that drawn. Okay, so you've now got like that silhouette underneath. So if someone was, was looking underneath, they could see the vacuum cylinder type thing was there. I haven't got a full detailed plan of it, and none of these photos show it in too much detail. But again, it's engaged. I'm not. I'm not overly bothered. If you can find a plan, then great. By all means, copy it. Um, one more thing to note is I'm, I don't ever draw the brake blocks on because I, they, they they end up getting in the way, getting snapped off. They become really brittle. So for me, I just I don't think I need them. I'm quite happy with how it looks without. Um, if you wanted to add them in, then but yeah, by all means, go ahead. But. I'm looking at engage and I don't think I, I need them so they'd only end up getting snapped and then I'd, I'd be annoyed that I've got all these snapped handbrake parts. Um, so I'm going to leave this episode at this point here. Hope you've enjoyed watching um, and then you've got some idea of how to go about creating these parts, especially the difficult part here, making sure that these all line up on both sides so that they look so, um, like the rod goes all the way through at the correct. 
Okay, so if you've enjoyed it, please look, press the like and subscribe, and please watch those videos, comments, so the YouTube algorithm picks it up. Thanks for watching.